Now, my lab and some other labs uh, have, have become obsessed with this fascinating part of your body called the vagus nerve. Vagus is Latin for wandering, and the vagus nerve starts at the top of your spinal cord. And just think about a couple of things. It's unique to mammals, right? Uh, it is interconnected, some studies suggest, with uh, oxytocin networks, which we're about to talk about. Recent studies suggest the vagus nerve is also related to a stronger immune system response. And very recent evidence in the last year or two suggests that the vagus nerve, as it wanders through the body, regulates your inflammation response to disease. This is one of the great mind-body nexuses in the, the human nervous system. The vagus nerve wanders through your body, starts right up here on the top of your spinal cord. It goes to muscles in your neck that help you nod your head and orient your gaze towards other people and vocalize. It then goes down and drops down and helps coordinate the interaction between your breathing and your, cardio, your heart rate. Every time you take a deep breath, right, your heart rate slows down. It's like baseball pitchers, three and two count. You don't see them go, right? They, they breathe out to calm down. The vagus nerve controls that uh, relationship between those two patterns. Then it drops down into the spleen and liver, and controls a lot of digestive processes. There used to be uh, certain surgeries for digestive disorders that would sever the vagus nerve um, because it regulates digestive process. It's this amazing bundle of nerves, and given that it helps you communicate, it helps you empathize by orienting gaze because it's connected up to oxytocin receptors, uh, and because it's mammalian, a fellow named Steve Porges said, this is the love, bun the love nerve in your body. It is the caretaking nerve in your body. What a fascinating possibility. So what we've been doing in our lab to uh, assess that thesis is we show participants images of suffering and distress. And if you, if you reflect on the image, you may even feel your chest sort of change a little. And then because this is Berkeley, we show them images that create an opposite state, which is pride. So we'll show our undergrads images of Berkeley, like Sather Gate. Um, and this is what's amazing to me. Images of suffering activate the vagus nerve, right? We have a new study. If somebody tells you an experience of, say, their grandparent dying, your vagus nerve fires. If they tell you an inspiring story, their vagus nerve fires. It's getting ready for feelings of compassion. This Graph just shows you when you measure vagus nerve by looking at the relationship between heart rate and breathing, we call RSA, the more I feel compassion, the stronger the vagus nerve response, the more I feel pride, the weaker the vagus nerve response. And this really astounds me. In that state of having a strong vagus response, vagus nerve response, I feel common humanity with many different groups. Right? I'm feeling connected to people of different political persuasions, different ethnic origins. These are Berkeley undergrads. They even admit to feeling similar to Stanford undergraduates, which is a remarkable thing. So, um, and that's the self-other similarity. So these deep ethical intuitions of, gee, we have common humanity, are tracking a physiological process, which is really, really cool. Um, another way that we can study the role of the vagus nerve in compassion and the meaningful life and, and social well-being is find people who have really strong vagus nerves uh, or sort of high levels of activation in that bundle of nerves. You can do it in the lab. You could come to my lab and we could give you a profile of, how, and we think of this as a temperament. Um, I, I, as a joke, called these people vagal superstars, but uh, that's how people like to think about them. Um, and what we find is a really interesting profile. If you have a really sort of a, a strong uh, vagal profile, which you can cultivate through exercise, and recent studies suggest meditation uh, and other practices, if you have a strong profile, you have more positive emotion on a daily basis, stronger relationships with peers, 
better social support networks, kids in schools, fifth graders who have a stronger vagal profile are the kids who intervene when a kid is being bullied and they cooperate and will generate, will do, do, donate time, like re recess time, to help a kid who needs help on homework. Uh, it relates to altruism and prosociality as well, and they're trusted more. So another kind of data that says, wow, we think of compassion as, as this higher order emotion, but it really is tracking part of our, our nervous system as well. Thank you.